Just this week, an Erdos problem, unsolved for 30 years, was proved by AI, a system called Aristotle. Or at least, that's what the headlines say. Headlines which have stirred up a lot of different emotions from mathematicians. And this is understandable. On first thoughts, it's not at all clear whether you should be excited or a bit uncomfortable about this. It's very hard to think about just how different maths will be in the era of vibe proving, an era that it looks like we're entering. So in this video, I'm going to cut through the noise and tell you exactly what was proven by Harmonics AI. If this is actually impressive or not. And most importantly, what does this mean for the future of doing math? Because whether you like it or not, change is coming. Okay, so here is Erdos's problem number 124. Essentially, it's asking if you fix some finite collection of integers bigger than three that satisfy this reciprocity condition. Intuitively, if these integers are really big, then you'll want more of them. Then given such a collection, is there a point past which every integer can be written as a sum where every term is of powers of these integers, but each fixed integer can contribute at most one power, but it doesn't have to. And then there's a further condition which demands your fixed set to be co-prime and if you're using a power of them in the sum then k greater than or equal to one means you can't use its zero power which is just one. Now this has appeared in three of Erdos's papers but two of them omitted this and Aristotle proved the weaker version but I believe that maybe this wasn't included at the time. So this is where the controversy arises. Without that condition it makes it more of an IMO level problem which is still cool but we've seen that happen quite a lot now and also Terry Tao wrote that it's really just an extension of a known result already referring to it as low hanging fruit. So from a mathematician's perspective you've got this Silicon Valley company shouting from the rooftops that we are on the cusp of a profound change in mathematics and that vibe proving is here. And so there's been lots of comments trying to bring them down to earth again, explaining how this was a much weaker version and that math has a long tail of relatively easy problems, low hanging fruit that have remained unsolved for 30 years because no one's looked at them and that this one is a long way down that tail. The comment that struck me the most was that it's like celebrating that you climbed a mountain that has a similar name to Mount Everest, except what you climbed was a hill, not a mountain. But here's the thing, whether they realized it or not, they're a company and they have to mark it. If you've done something cool, you need eyeballs on it. And what this has done is more than just cool. It really is a first signal as to how the future for mathematicians will look and how quickly that's coming. What this has shown the world is proof of concept. You have a system that, without a human in the loop, has formalized the statement, explored the proof space, and then formalized its argument. The natural development is that the role of a mathematician pivots more to a proof architect. You choose the definitions, you give some initial high-level ideas and guidance, and then you set it running. And already there are prominent mathematicians saying things like, maybe we should be teaching proof debugging. Remember, they're a company, but you can see Humans will remain at the centre of mass research. Or hypothesis two, there will be dramatically more mathematicians in 10 years than there are today. And I see lots of mathematicians on Twitter talking about experimenting as playing this architect role and having success. And so this is exciting, no? Well, the issue with this romantic view is that it's implicitly assuming that it will get good enough to a point where it changes the role of a mathematician, but not good enough so that there's actually value in having humans talk to these things. And the other issue that we're starting to see is that in systems where AI interacts with formalization, there are cases where it comes up with proofs that are verified, but when a human looks at it, it's very uninterpretable in that it's leveraged the structure of formalizations in ways we just wouldn't think. And interpretability and lack of it is a worrying issue. Is it a good thing having really powerful systems doing things that we can't understand. 